All right, uh, let's turn to education now. And WITS has announced uh, that a top uh, nuclear physicist will lead the institution from January next year. Professor Zeblon Vilakazi will take the reins from Adam Habib, who leaves WITS at the end of the year to lead the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. He's already a leader at WITS, uh, but many of us still need to get to know him. Um, Professor Zeblon Vilakazi joining us now via Skype. Professor, thank you very much and congratulations. Are you excited? or a little uh, daunted. We know that higher education is a contested space um, with some challenges right now. Thank you, Francis, uh, for the kind introduction. I'm excited. Obviously, at the time, at the same time, you know, I wouldn't say daunted, but aware of the challenges that lie ahead in terms of, for example, uh, running, managing an institution as complex as this in the wake of the COVID crisis. And you can see with the report we saw previously in the previous clip that you know, the economic devastation and many other challenges that will arise as a result of this will just uh, stretch management to its limit in terms of you know, digging deeper to find solutions yeah. for the university. Uh, and I'd like to ask you about some of your ideas, but first let's look at what you have um, achieved already. All universities want to be strong in terms of research. You're currently Vice Principal and Deputy Vice uh, Chancellor for Research and Postgrad Studies. Apparently research output has more than doubled under your leadership. Uh, how did you do that? Well, obviously it's not a, a job of one person. You need to have a very strong team that supports you. You need to ensure that you have the buy-in buy of all members of the university community to, you know, buy into the vision that you're trying to project in terms of ensuring that we uh, maintain a strong footprint in the entire research uh, agenda, in the entire research uh, um, space. And I think that was because of, you know, uh, highly motivated academics, support staff, and everyone who actually helped support me and the other academics in this project. Do you feel that you have uh, big shoes to fill? Uh, I remember when Adam Habib announced that he would be leaving, even his um, adversaries uh, from Fees Must Fall, uh, some of the students uh, engaged in rigorous debate with him, said he should in fact stay. He has made an impact. Yes, and obviously uh, I'd like to pay my tribute to the, uh, you know, my boss still until the end of the year, Professor Habib. Obviously we've got you know, different styles. Uh, I come from a science perspective. It's got much better engagement with the media, so I have to learn. So probably in the next few months, I've got to learn a lot in terms of being able to interact with the media. But I do believe that, uh, you know, uh, it's been a, an era of incredible growth under his leadership. So my aim now in assignment is to take the university to the next level, uh, building up on the achievements of the last eight years that we, must, that the vice chancellor and members of the senior executive team team and the university broadly have achieved against all the challenges that you alluded to, uh, Francis. Well, uh, welcome to your very steep uh, learning curve. Uh, Professor, is there anything you would have done differently looking at the way Vitz uh, dealt with those fees must fall students um, with calls for the decolonization of education, um, looking at issues around statues around the country? These are all important issues right now. Well, indeed, you know, uh, Francis, obviously now looking back with hindsight, I'll have all solutions. But when problems present themselves at the time, you deal with the amount of available information you have you know, in hand, at hand. So I think, obviously, I would say that it would have been done differently in the quarters, but that was all the information we had. So new challenges, by the way, Francis, will you know, be on my doorstep in the next three, four, five years, you know, of my tenure here uh, and, and, and beyond that. So I think I'll basically, we'll take the lessons we learned, you know, in 2015, 16, how to avoid certain situations that ought, ought to have been avoided by the time we had the limited information because we hadn't been hit by something like that before. So I think it's a learning process. We are learning institutions. Uh, and uh, you say that the lockdown has been a wake-up call for WITS. Um, it's had to respond. We know uh, sending data to students, online learning, uh, suddenly prolific. What do you think WITS needs uh, now to operate in, in this new uh, sort of world that, that we're heading into? You know, what COVID 
did was, you know, to take this something from a movie I saw as a young star called Back to the Future. It fast forwarded what is called the, you know, things that are part of what are called the fourth industrial revolution, online learning, massive open access courses. Uh, but online learning is not what you call the panacea. It cannot solve all our problems. Contact learning is very important in terms of building networks, ensuring that people are able to interact and learn to work with people of diverse backgrounds. So I see in the post-COVID world a, a merger of both online classroom learning, sorry, of online and classroom learning. So I think it will actually be an opportunity for us to reimagine education of the 21st century in the era of digitization. So it's something that actually has been forced upon us to grapple with and face with the future challenges. Uh, and, and maybe let's end with this. I mean, is there one thing you can think of that you really want to focus on to make WITS uh, attractive, uh, sort of first port of, of call for talented students in this country? Well, WITS must be the great attractor for the smartest tech savvy innovators. I think the idea that you want to have is not to, not to educate job seekers, but to educate job creators in the space of tech. We want to establish almost something that MIT and Stanford did to spawn a new tech hub around Brownfontein that will be the great attractor for some of the most innovative, driven youngsters across the country and even staff and faculty uh, in this highly, in this creative arc uh, that we are trying to build around the Brownfontein precinct. So we want to be the innovative university of the 21st century where we don't import technology, but we export technology. Because you have the talent, you just need to, you know, work around it. All right. Uh, well, best of luck. Uh, we'll follow those plans next year. Uh, he starts on the 1st of January. Uh, that was the incoming Vice-Chancellor of its uh, Professor Zeblon Vilakazi.